nerd soul. Lay ill kid at one yo still holding it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go, bruh. Man, look, that ninja Kamui done got a brother. All right, it done, man. Look, they done left us with a cliffhanger like this. Look, hey, if you're brand new to the show, much love to you. Thanks for rolling through, whether you watch one second or you watch all the seconds. Bottom line is this. We, okay, so, wow, oh, man, we we got some revelations. I thought we got revelations last week. We got some revelations this week. All right, so revelation number one, the mystery caller is not Mr. Alza. So it's not, it's not him. He was just on the treadmill chilling. He was kicking it, getting his, you know, got to get your cardio up. So he, he he ain't the one. I was thinking all this time. I was like, yo, maybe it's him. Maybe he want to get, you know, get all the other Insidious Six out the way so he could do his thing. But it wasn't him. It was one of the Insidious Six, but it wasn't him. So I'm like, oh, snap. This changes the game considerably because now, at least from what it looks like from the shots from the next episode they're still in alza city behind enemy lines so this is might turn into basically just an all-out race to the finish to be able to get out alive if you will and higan probably didn't even try to get out alive because he's still trying to complete his mission he's gonna kill all y'all so now i don't even know who the girl is i'm guessing maybe the girl is the other chick that we saw from the past not not his uh not uh was it mari i can't remember his wife's name i'm so sorry it's not his wife's name uh, i mean his wife but the other girl that they you know they were all getting their their um like kind of like ninja graduation or whatever together so i'm guessing it's her but bruh man who okay okay because it's not like this lowly person that was helping him. This is like someone in the inner circle. So it's a huge deal. Like they said, the crow has left with the tiger. So like, you know, saying like they have left the fatherly nest or whatever. So, wow, this is this is a huge betrayal for against them. And I am sure that they're going to use every resource they have to try to get them either back to torture them or kill them or whatever. But this episode played out with action in spades. Um, I want to give a shout out to the animation. Just the movement, the uh, the fluidity of it was on point. Whether he was flight man, look, those those little security guards, they didn't have no chance. Them little like kind of sort of SWAT looking security guards, they didn't have no chance, man. Look, I don't even know why they even like, man. Why did y'all even come in and think y'all was going to do something? Like, uh, I, you know, whatever, y'all, whatever you want, do, do your thing. Anyway, then you had the sort of like the Foot Clan variety, Garden variety ninjas. They did a little bit better because after you see, after you killed, like, I don't know, let's say 20, 30 people, however many it was, he was bleeding. Like, his arm was, his arm or hand was bleeding. So they did get a little bit of them. But uh, between all those people, it still won't enough. Not even close to take him down. It wasn't until he was already kind of like tired and whooped up a little bit that even the, I guess, the the four kind of like armored of the Insidious Six could go after him. And I would, I would probably argue that he could have taken them if he was at full strength not you know after he done ran like two miles and beat up about 30 40 people you know what i'm saying like if he was fresh you know what i'm saying fresh nice warmed up ready to go you know fresh in the morning then it might have went differently he even tried to accurate activate his secret art again which didn't really work so how close to death is he that's that's the question i mean we know the season ain't over and we know that he's going to get healed in some type of way, but how long will that healing take? And will he ever get back to, I don't know, 100%, you know what I'm saying? Will he be able to get back to that? Who knows? But on the flip side, we get to see 
our intrepid detective, Mike Morris. And the issue here with Mike Morris is not that he's going off on his own and doing his thing. We already knew that. But after meeting this ex alza employee who's like, yo, I want to out them for being like uh, corrupt and everything. When we see that secret list of like agent names and Emma's name is on it. Bruh, come on, man. Come on, Emma. Don't do me like this, girl. Emma, don't do, Emma, come, come on, Emma. Don't do me like this. But I guess I guess what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I mean, we got uh, we got someone who betrayed the bad guys. I guess it's someone who betrayed the good guys. Or maybe he didn't she didn't betray the good guys. She might have been working for hours all this time in the first place. Who knows? Ah man, I don't know. All I know is why is your name on this list, girl? Unless you're doing a double double cross, then that means you're still a good guy. So I right. but all I'm saying is your name is on that list and I ain't happy about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if either any of y'all is, but I ain't happy about her name being on that list because that, that name make you suspect. Like say, say if we open up that list and you looked on there and like your best friend's name was on there, you'd be like, whoa, whoa, hold up. I know good and well such and such name ain't on this. So ah, she got some explaining to do. With that, added on to the fact that she's been super close with like uh mike's movements to be able to lead the you know lead the alza folks to wherever he is you know what i'm saying pretending like she good i hope she good but it ain't looking good now mike i gotta sit down i need to talk to you my brother my brother look brother to brother all right you got a beard i got a beard all right so we both brothers holding it down you out here looking like teddy pendergrass with a detective coat you make me proud in the way that you investigate. I like your interrogation style. I truly admire your diligence in your work. But we've got to talk about your car, man. Look, we got to, we got to talk about the whip. All right, look. Now, I'm not saying that you got to be out here like Mike Lowry. All right. But in cases like this, you need to be out here like Mike Lowry. I because look that that 92 Toyota Tercel or whatever that that uh, I don't know Ford Taurus from 1980 and three it ain't gonna work man it ain't gonna work nah 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 uh-uh nah we need a well-built fully functional and well serviced car all right that means you got to keep up on your service now don't get me wrong look, I, mean, I ain't throwing no shade to my to my mechanic spots but look if you're an fbi agent you need to be taking your stuff to the dealer bro you can't you can't be getting you can't be getting that you know what i'm saying that shoddy service or that you know i mean hey look i know you're going to try to take it to your boy all right he fixes cars in his backyard i i, I get it but nah you got a car where at any moment you can be in a car chase, all right? You need that car to respond and to work properly like a well-oiled machine that it is and that it should be, all right? I'm going to need you to get a, a, a proper vehicle, all right? Because I'm going to tell you like this, all right? Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett, all right? They wouldn't be caught dead in that, all right? And I'm going to tell you like this. They wouldn't... Hey, look, if there was some cars flying around and some shooting and some driving you best believe they would have been good you want to know why because they get proper vehicles man proper vehicles <sighs> it is key for you to be able to ride this ain't even about riding around in style this is about you being able to know that at any given moment especially since you almost got bloat up in the restaurant at any given moment that you can press on the gas and that you're going to get a positive response from the engine all right to be able to work through and pull the load with the torque that's necessary to be able to get out of harm's way all right look just listen to me i know what i'm talking about all right my brother you need to get a fresh car all right throw that the other stuff out don't even trade it in you just need to put that in the trash like just drive it to the dump and just just put it in neutral and just let it go into the dump don't even just take it to the transfer station or wherever they call it in your city. Just leave it there. And it ain't no good to you no more. Especially got a whole bunch of bullet holes in it now. So, I mean, you don't need that thing. 
man, look, it, I'm saying this because I, I care about your health and I want you to be safe. All right, Mike, I, I need you to be safe. Your, your name, Mike, my name, Mike, we need to be safe. All right. You, you see my car. All right. Well, all right, you don't see my car, but you see my car. All right. I keep it. I keep it serviced. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I go to the dealership and I tell them, go through there and find what you need, what they need to work. And then when they tell me it costs this, I say, I, right, there's a warranty cover in here. <laughs> and then they say, they say, I, right, yes or no. And then I be like, I, right, and then I pay the difference. And then, you know what I'm saying? I'm, look, I'm just saying, you need to keep your car on point. And well, first, you just need a car that is on point. All right. So, Ah, with that said, guys, we had a great episode. The, the action was there. The music was there. The emotion was there, especially when we were dealing with Higan and, of course, uh, Yamaji, who was watching from afar with the helicopter and saw the emotion in his voice, even with Zai um, going back and forth with him technically twice in this episode. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with this show. This show shines it really does it is something that i was not expecting this season and i'm glad we got it man Z uh what is it ninja ninja kamui with zai with uh yamaji and their beef between or i guess their beef and their uh i guess historical ties to higan also this stuff with emma that's coming to light there's a lot here a lot of meat here for me to get into and the action is just crazy good man like i mean yo ain't nothing wrong with that then we got what solo leveling that's beat that's beat you know what i'm gonna talk about that next in just a second we ain't gonna we gonna leave that alone but guys look let me know what y'all think about this show because ninja kamui is killing it for me anyway let's move on <laughs> i done caught up y'all that's right i'm right up there with it I'm checking y'all out. I'm, I'm here. We one on one right now. <laughs> one on one. We right there. You and me. We watch it at the same time. Shout out to everybody that put me up on solo leveling so I can go in and check out the story. Uh, Gene Wu, Gene Wu, Gene Ho. They out there doing their thing, man. You know, they, they trying to live in this hunter world. Now, the show in general. I think it's dope. Like, I, you know, at first, I when I saw the trailer, I was like, mm, I don't really get it. I don't know, man. I, psh, I, whatever. But after seeing the first episode, I was, I was willing to give it a, a you know, a few more episodes. I watched that second one, man. That joy blew my mind. I ain't gonna front, especially when old boy. <laughs> I was talking with Dub about it on anime. And I was like, yo, look, what that dude was saying. I'm fast. I can get out of this dungeon. Don't I've got the speed or whatever. Man, when he got blown out his socks, bruh. It, nothing but smoking shoes. Man, you know I was all come on, you know I'm all for that. And they don't hold back on these fight scenes, which I'm I'm very pleased with. Um but the main character also isn't someone who annoys me. Um, and that can happen from time to time. You know what I'm saying? You watching the show, you like, man, he's doing about to get on my nerves. This dude don't. It, he he never comes off as the way they position him. He never really comes off as untouchable. You know, I want to see my main character work for it. You know what I'm saying? I want I want to see him or her kind of uh, go through adversity. Uh, you know, obtain something that was that was hard to get them to kind of like build and, and you know train and all that stuff i did that and i also like the idea that he doesn't come off as extremely arrogant either he's not walking around like i'm the best in the world you can't tell me nothing he don't do all that you know what i'm saying gino is just like yo man hey i'm trying to make some money to feed my daughter you know but all right he's feeding the sister but still you know taking care of his sister then of course trying to do something to you know as assist his mother with her uh with her uh medical bills and also just the ability to hopefully be able to you know get out of the coma and he's going through this 
day to day dealing with trying to hide his identity is almost kind of like a superhero story in that way because he's trying to hide his powers as well as get these jobs because these jobs equal money as well as make sure that he does enough to level up in the in the game or whatever where he's been i don't know extra real reawakened because the other reawakened people don't see what he be seeing so he's some extra special stuff but it's probably from that god or gods that was in that you know disappearing dungeon slash temple thing that he was in and if you you know if you already know the end and everything you know what i'm saying don't be telling me now nah, nah, i'll be look i don't be like coop up in here all right don't be spoiling anything i don't let, let me enjoy it i don't mind if y'all answer some questions for me but don't be like oh don't worry bro next year guess what happened now nah, i ain't trying to hear all that i want to experience this story especially with the you got the crooked hunters you got the crooked government you got these crooked uh like uh I don't know if the like hunter association people like bruh it's dirty folks all around you think like i right, these are some people that i can rely on no everybody dirty man like you got the the hunter guilds they dirty the hunter association they dirty the government the general government and you know in the uh in the story or in this country at least seems to be dirty then the energy producing folks is dirty then the hunters you go out with you gotta watch your back from them like bruh the, i like how they set up this story i mean it would be nice to have a couple of people that got your back but i mean this story has competing interests which i really enjoy i enjoy situations where we don't just have a direct good and bad there's people all over that want a certain thing for whatever the reason is um and they might be good or good ish or bad or bad ish you know kind of thing and then we throw it in a pot and let those different ideologies kind of collide and i think that serves for you know i, I think that serves a greater goal in creating a very deep story that can you know go for a long time i i mean especially with this elixir of life thing i think we could at least do the elixir of life for like the first season man like i you know what i'm saying i want to see your ma dukes get up you know what i'm saying go in and get that elixir i mean he did he he took a chance all right he took a chance we're going to the to the you know demon dungeon or whatever the the top level real deal dungeon i mean he had to fight that triple dog and he got smart with it you know he got smart with using his you know his abilities and his uh tools and stuff but i think it was it was a good idea for him to be like all right let me regroup i'll come back to this place when i get a chance because you know he he won't ready for that boy like whoo but that the i guess i'll call it the terror dog for now the terror dog that battle was crazy because it's like we're seeing our hero getting mangled like whew, leg gone arms gone getting bit off through your torso and stuff just all kinds of craziness i ain't gonna front i think it's well done it's well played and this is a top quality anime man from the issue with what mr huang uh is gonna do or i guess i guess his brother well yeah mr huang they're both mr huang but what he's gonna do because his brother set me up and that that's another thing bro before we even get look yo your brother lived by the sword and he died by it there it is don't be coming up mad at me what your brother tried to kill me i killed him first the end don't be getting mad at me nah 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 don't bring that mess over here you know your brother's dirty you dirty that's how y'all live what oh oh the game ain't fun no more because you lost uh-uh nah bruh uh-uh you lost and don't roll up in here like you won't catch that l neva because uh which uh what is it genu was like mr Huang. You're impressive, but I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Whoo! Now I love that. I ain't gonna front. I love that. My, yo, my boy came through. I love that because he he's not an arrogant dude. He be trying. He be like, yo, I don't want to hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? Even he even makes a a huge distinction, and the other hunters do too. A huge distinction, like you know, sort of like we don't kill humans. Like killing humans is like a like kind of like a taboo thing, but He's like, look, this is you or me. Y'all set us up, and now y'all coming in. Y'all think y'all just gonna come up in here and kill a brother? Man, we slice that neck. 
You know what I'm saying? He ain't playing. Then he he one hand slammed Mr. Huang into the dirt, into the dirt. Bro, look, it, yo, it's a beautiful thing. I, now I will say I love seeing bad guys get their comeuppance. All right, he deserved that. He was wrong. He he. Who knows how many other hunters they done kill and they pass. Bruh, he just got justice for countless hunters. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said sometimes revenge and justice can run hand in hand. Bruh, look, yo, I bet you, Mr. Huang, they're going to learn something today. And when his brother come through, like, oh, how can I commit a crime? Look at how dirty he is. If, if you commit a crime overseas, then you get this. You commit a crime here. Look, I bet you one thing. Come on over here and see what happened. Yo, because look, my boy leveling up. You know what I'm saying? Level up, level up. I like I yo, I like what I'm seeing. From end to end, I'm digging the show. I'm I'm happy I'm watching this. This season, I'd say the the standouts for me are, of course, uh <laughs> solo leveling. We got as well Ninja Kamui and uh Metallic Rouge. We'll get into that next week, man, because i I haven't talked about it in a while. I love the revolutionary nature of it, like I said before. Um, and I got some thoughts. I got some thoughts on the Neons and and where they're going and what their plans are and the Mortal Nine and stuff like that and and where Rouge should really stand in that. So of course, holla me. I'ma holla you. Got in them comments. Let's talk solo level and let's talk Ninja Kamui. So of course, N-E-R-D, S-O-U-L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. And until the next time that you have to fight someone that you thought was supposed to be your ally, this is just from us to you saying peace. <laughs>